everybody. Welcome to Flip the Switch. I am Marla Schultz, your host, and this is a show where we talk about the power of punchlines and how it can help you drain the main pain because being punny and funny is the way to flip the switch and get to the other side. I am so excited to have Michelle Ballin join us. She has been voted by the New York Post as one of the top 10 comedians to watch. The San Francisco Bay Times voted her the top 10. She has a CD out called Neurotic by Nature. She's She was a finalist on Last Comic Standing. I am so happy to have you. Welcome, Michelle. Hi there, Marla. So good to see you. Look great, honey. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hey, listen, I got to, you know, I got to suck up to you. No, you, you don't. Really- you don't have to suck up to me. I just, I, I, I had to turn over a new leaf. I've got, I've put on weight. I wear the same sweatpants. Now oh, they're fleece please. line because of the winter. And I was like, you know what? I got to do something with, I got, I got to get a little zhuzhed up. Yeah. Well, from you look here fabulous up, too. From here up, I didn't gain weight, but from down here, I swear to God, isn't it something? Everybody, the skinniest people I know are fat now. Have you seen somebody? Or, oh my God, they yes. all have bellies. Yeah. My super, who is like this, has this with a belly. It's crazy now. From the uh, like the Florida lady, the Florida lady <laughs> belly. You know where it's like all down here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mine is. Yeah. Pretty much. So good to well, see. Anyway. You. I'm so I really I'm thrilled that you found the time to do my uh, radio <laughs> show. But basically what I what I love about this show is one, I get to talk to some of my favorite people and really just do a deep dive into the power of humor and how it helps flip the switch and how it's been, you know, for me, it's been a superpower for me. When did you know that your sense of humor could flip a situation? Do you remember? I do. I do. And first of all, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. It's not like I had a lot to do during the pandemic <laughs> that I had time to go into the <sighs> other room and turn on the computer. Was that hard? <laughs> um, but, you know, it's funny when I was younger and I just say things, I don't know if this was you and just people would laugh. I, I mean, I had no I don't know. I would I it thinks I would you know, people would be angry fighting and I just say something and I, I you know, I didn't do it purposely. It just or I was in sales. I had a corporate career. Me that, too. Yeah. That I was making money and blah, 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 blah. Of course, I should have saved that money, but I did not. So I'll be working till 112. But um, I'll be I'll be your opening act till I'm, you know, 112 too. <laughs> so we'll just have to, you know, oh try the God. road of happy destiny, isn't that? Or the happy uh, chuckles. But let me just say about the comedy, because when I was in sales, and as a girl at that time, it was a long time ago, you know, people would be like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they would really give me shit. They were so nasty when I make a cold call. But then out of nowhere, I just say something funny and, and people, be, they go, all right, come in Tuesday and see me. So, yeah. I, yeah, I think comedy. I always think if I get, uh, I don't know why, if I get thrown in prison, which I'm surprised I haven't, haven't <laughs> that when they want to beat me up, I'll be the funny one. So the girls I'm right there with up, you. Right. You think I'll turn them around and I'll be there. You know, I'll be their clown. I'll be their funny one. And I won't, you know, have all of them behind me kicking the ass of other girls in the prison because absolutely that's, that's what comedy does. People just they want to laugh. And when I found out that, you know, I left my corporate career, long story longer. I was I was I went into the program, 12 step program, A-A-N-A, Oive. I went into it all because I was doing all kinds of things, you know. Yeah. You know, off the 80s drugs, you know, if you know what I'm saying. And um, I tried uh, it once. That was it. Anyway, continue. Oh, my God. So I um, I left my my job. I took a leave of absence and I went into the program. And, you know, when I go all to the AA meetings you know, constantly and then. You know, when you go, I don't know if you've ever been to 12-step program. Uh, but... uh, yeah, I'm doing okay. it right now, girl. Oh, yeah? For what? The eating? Uh, no. Oh. Just everything. Okay. Yeah, not my business, but yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, so I need 24 steps. But anyhow, I um, would go. And, you know, everybody's so loving in those programs. They like so. Oh, it's so okay. amazing. Coming. So what happened is, is they had a cabaret one weekend all but only people from the program writing plays, doing shows. It was like, man, these people are talented. They wrote all the show. So I said, can we do a cabaret? Because I 
was doing, you know, I hadn't really done comedy professionally a little bit. So I said, I want to be, you know, the host and do comedy. Well, so I did stand up comedy at this 12 step program. And let me tell you something. Tell me. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Tell I, me. I, I, well, first of all, it's a loving audience. Even if I shit on stage, they'd probably enjoy me. But absolutely. But I destroyed. Now, again, it was, you know, those loving people. And I still have it on cassette tape. <laughs> That's how I still have it. I say I would listen to it over and over and go, oh, my God, I love this. I love this. I loved the way the people laughed. I love the sure. way. And I just, you know. But of course, that's a loving audience. Now you have to move it to an audience that don't know who the hell you are. But uh, I was just and then I left my career of 19 years, I think. And um, wow. Well, you've yeah. gotten really, really far because I'm on. I think I'm going on maybe 25, 26 years now. So I got you beat. But no, I think no, I'm doing comedy almost 30. I left my oh. career of 19 years. So got you know, it. Yeah, nobody. Yeah. So I'm old. That's why I'm old now. But um, so I just and I was making good money and, you know, having the program behind me, they were going, you could do it. You could, you know, yeah. I'm telling you, you could do it. You could do it. And they go, you should Higher be your power is your I audience will be there to help you. And meanwhile, I lost my apartment. I was sleeping on my friend's couch. Where the hell's the higher power now? Right. So. He's so not my landlord. That's <laughs> obvious. <laughs> exactly. Where the fuck is that higher power you <laughs> talk about? So I ended up, I had an apartment I owned in the village. I couldn't maintain it because, you know, you don't quit a job, a good corporate job and make money the next day. You know, that doesn't, you don't think about that when you're getting sober and everybody's going, you can do this. You can do this. So I, right. um, yeah. So everybody, you should be a stand-up comic. Now, I don't know if people said this to you. You are so funny. You should be a stand-up comic. And then you would think, how do yeah. I become a stand Like, is there, is there like, do you sign or do you go to an employment agency and go? Oh, that's I funny. I mean, seriously, because how do you just become a stand-up comic? You have to, I, you, you know? have to. But I, uh, in my, I was always funny and I was always getting in trouble. And I talked the the tough girls out of kicking my ass because yes, I was funny. Yes, and I think you and I would be the queens if we were in prison <laughs> together and we'd be having shows and, you know, we uh, like Big Mama. Big Wouldn't Mama be would great? be, you know, our 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 bitches. And exactly. I, could, I see the whole thing. Wouldn't that would be hilarious. But, that would be a yes. great sitcom, wouldn't it be? You and me and Jen. So. How are we going to turn ourselves? Oh, my God. That's funny. But it's fine mess you got us into. Thanks a lot, <laughs> Michelle. And then it's like these giant, nasty women that, you know, they we just become like their teddy bears. Yeah. Um, protect but, us, you've had audiences like that where you think oh, they yeah. hate me. They're going to kill me. And then they end up going, girl, you were so funny. I love you. And oh, going, oh, absolutely. Right. But that's yeah. the thing that I think. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up is stand up. It forces you, you walk into a situation, you have like less than 60 seconds to make the audience like you and show right. them that you've got the balls and that you can do the job. But, right. you know, I think being a women, woman working on cruises, uh, it's a whole different audience. So right. it's it's like, it really, right. you know, jacks up and it just like takes your confidence to a whole nother level to be able to do that and put your yeah. ass on the line. Yeah. But then so many comics are really insecure. And, you know, I, I was I was in that camp or, you know, I think we're working are. on everybody. getting like getting yeah. out. What was yeah. that? I think everybody is insecure in the in the in the business, in, in comedy or acting. You know, we're there for different reasons. We like it. But there's a part of us that's like, you know, feed yeah. me the love. You know what I mean? That we oh, never yeah. got somewhere. And so. So we all are. We all go out there. And, and of course, you know, you could have great shows, great shows. And you have one bad show and you're like, that's it. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going to go work at D'Agostino's. I've had it, you know, one bad. Now, show. Did, you, did you have do you remember uh, that one bad show that almost told you to quit? Let me tell you something. I've had a few, but this one, <laughs> I almost committed suicide. I swear to God, I was a new new friar at the Friars Club. I just joined. I was like new because I was just on last comic standing and blah, blah, blah. 
So yeah, the, let, just, let's let's have a flashback. Here's uh, some of the uh, women. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You remember the big roast that they did, right? They would take yeah. the Hilton Hotel and blah 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 blah. So because I was on Last Comic and I was like, you know, they asked me to do a roast. Now, honestly. I didn't know that the people write the roast jokes. You know, they had people that write for these people. Sure. You think they would have told me, you know what I mean? I'm roasting someone I know shit about and I'm looking uh. at the thing. And um, so I'm, I'm nervous. Talk about nervous. I mean, I'm sitting on the dais with the uh, big stars and I'm like, what the? So Alzi Lawrence, <laughs> Alan, who, who else? Who else? And um so, so what happened, I know this sounds like a, and I was busy because I just got off the show and I was running. So I, I know it sounds like an excuse, but I had gotten sick. I really was sick as a dog. I went with Stacy. I don't know if you remember her. My, I remember her. Yeah, yeah. So she came with me and I was like burning up with 127 temperature. Mm. And uh, of course I would have bombed anyway, but I blaming it on the temperature. So I sit down and here's how it works. You sit down. I'm scared to death. All these people out there from the hill. <laughs> you know, a thousand from, you know, all walks of entertainment. Wait a second. And is this the one that's taped for TV? No, no. This is oh, the, okay. This is not this Comedy Central. So um, it used to be Friars Club, you know, but the old days with Dean Martin and all those. Sure. So, uh, I mean, maybe they recorded it. I hope not. Um, I recorded it. It's been since 2007. I still haven't watched it. That's okay. How- I, I don't want anything to do. I don't want to see it. So I am. Um, and they don't tell you when you're going on next. So I'm sitting there. I'm here, And Lisa Lampanelli was the host. Killing it. Killing it. You know, and I, you know, I could kill it if I knew what to do. You know, I, I was very insecure and I didn't know I couldn't just be funny. And I, you know, I was reading. I was talking about him and my jokes were good. Who I, that were you I, roasting? Who was it? It was. Um, who was it? I see his face, but I, he's whatever. Yeah. Anyway. So I looked him up and I said funny things and blah, blah, blah. My jokes were good, but I didn't sell it because I was so insecure. So I didn't, Mm. I didn't blah, 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 blah. And the silence in the room was, (gasps) let me tell you something. How many people? Oh, 1,000, 1,500, whatever. Yeah. 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 Okay, I it's still to this day. How many years later? Two thousand seven, maybe six. What was it? It never leaves. It I never have most dramatic stress. I yeah. swear to God. Just talking yeah. about it right now, it's like, well, let me. I mean, I'm not kidding. I still it it, it affects me, but not as like sure. Can you imagine leaving that? No. I, Oh my God. And, and I thought, how would my career change if I had done well? Because there was a lot of act, people there, you know? Sure. So like, oh, and even Lisa Lampanella, she was like, boy, that was good. <laughs> I, I, listen, I had a bomb like that. And I was working with Susie Essman, who was my mentor, who I adored and Corey yeah. Kahaney. Yeah. And I got the gig and I said, Corey, you follow me. And she said, you can't follow me. And I was like, yeah, I can follow you. So she goes up and kills. And it's like at the Harmony Club. It's like uber fancy, wealthy, wealthy club. And then I go up and it was crickets. Crickets. And I heard like (laughs) nothing. And I heard this woman go, Morty, she's terrible. (laughs) And I, 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 I just, it's like, I felt like I was up there for an eternity. I got off. And Corey, she said, I told you. And it was like, yes. Ugh. Yeah. You know, not just yeah. like stabbing, but Ugh. like, yeah, yeah, Ugh. yeah. And I went, I got off stage and I threw up and God bless Susie Essman. She said, you need to get back up on stage and, and forget about this. And then the next night I, I had a great show, but the PTSD it's like when I, so working on cruise ships gives me agita. And I think of that night, the minute I'm about to yeah. get on stage, which is, you know, it's not like an athlete who yeah. envisions success. I'm just like, I have her, I have her, I have her. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's like you, it's like losing the Super Bowl with that kick. You know uh, what I mean? Like you're the yes. last one kick and you miss. Yes. Oh my God, kill yourself. And it's funny because then after that, you know, I'm yeah, you can't, it's so hard to ever perform again thinking, yeah, 
I, how did you do it? I can't live through another one of these, you know, slowly, like little things. But then I got asked by Cameron Mannheim, you know, Cameron Mannheim. Oh, sure. Practice and all of this. She's be, she saw Alan me. Alan McBeal. Park. Yeah. No, no. Um, the practice. The practice. Yeah. And uh, so we're still in touch, as a matter of fact. She's doing me a favor uh, now. But anyhow. So Tell her um, I love her. Love, oh, her. love her. I love her. She's so good. She came up to me in a party in L.A. And she's like, oh, my God, you're Michelle Ballin. And I'm going, oh, my God, you're Cameron Mannheim. <laughs> you know, please. So she she enjoyed me on the on last comic. So so later on, it was her birthday. And she goes, I want you to perform at my birthday. Nice. My 50th birthday and blah, blah, blah. And this big to do in Santa Monica, blah, blah, blah. And I went, let me tell you something. Talking about wanting to shit. Because in my head, I kept thinking the Friars Club. Right. The Friars Club. Oh, my God. So I'm sitting there. Now we're talking every celebrity, Jason Alexander, you know, um, nice. Uh, all of them, everybody, you name it from what TV show they were there. OK, um, Deborah Messing and Alan Cumming. I mean, everybody from every show was there and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I love lobster and shrimp. They were giving <laughs> lobster and shrimp. And I'm like, I can't eat anything. Mm. I cannot eat. I was shitting. And the host sure. was Carolyn uh, Ray, Carol, Carolyn Ray. She was the MC, and I went after Stephen Stills was on before me, Ricky Lake. Oh, and he's he's really funny, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? They're looking at the program, Ricky Lake, Joe yeah. Kuzak, but Michelle Ballin. Who the hell is that? You know, and I'm in the program. Nice. Let me tell you something. I wanted to really like I was hoping I'd have a heart attack at that table so I could get out of so it. Funny. You know, I haven't been in a situation like please God, let me all of a sudden pass out and have a heart attack because I don't think I could go through with this. I was so scared. And I had uh, my friend Kate Rigg was there with me. And um, thank God I had to bring somebody. So now I'm going, it's my turn to go upstage. And Caroline Ray goes, okay. Because she was nervous. <laughs> and she just goes, this is like, um, she said a funny line. This is like something with the gladiators. Throw something out in the gladiators. She goes, Good luck. You'll be. And after I heard good luck, I'm like, <laughs> after, the, after the fucking Friars Club. And then this. No, I would never I wouldn't be doing comedy today. It'd be over. And the I said bitch to God, okay, triggered you. I know. The I bitch bombed, triggered I, you. Yeah, I've. Yeah, I bombed at the Friars Club. Please, God, what do you want me to give do to not bomb at this, please? So I go on stage and I, you know, I go into whatever it is. And she's Jewish, you know, she's Jewish and and people don't know if she's gay or straight. And so I go, you know, people always ask me if Cameron's gay or straight. And I go, yes. And uh, blah, blah, blah. So people just, you know, I I had the, them with the Jewish. There was a lot of Jews, you know, it's Hollywood. So I did a great job. Let me tell you something Good for you. Let me tell you how. I mean, I still couldn't breathe. I was so like. Thank you. Thank you. But if I had bombed that, I would, you wouldn't be talking to me now. I'd be like, no. oh, my God. But that was like, you know, that was really brought me back doing it. You know, all these. And I have that promo of Jason Alexander saying nice. how funny I am. That's my promo now. And uh, thank God for that. And Were that, you able? I got a very important question, though. Were you able to eat the lobster? And it was gone after. by the time it was gone. I got off. I was Michelle, so don't you know? Can you just put a plate on the side? <laughs> you always I, ask for a plate on the side for when you get off the stage. I, I know, I so know. I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. I should know better. Yes. Yeah. Oh, crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy. Oh. So let me ask you: um, Did you have to do any kind of preparation? I mean, you mentioned you were in the twelve steps. Did any of that help you? move on and kind of get that, you know, the bombing situation out of your head. So then you could just be like, you know, shut the fuck up. I can do this. Like yeah. what kind of self-talk did you do, if any? Well, well, by the time I was uh, bombing at the Friars Club, I was not in the 12 step program any longer. I don't, I was a friend of Bill's. Then I was an acquaintance, you know, oh, that's so funny. Yeah. So I am. Um, Write so, that down. Uh, yeah. I use it sometimes. <laughs> friend of Bill's. And I did a lot of the beautiful thing about AA. I wrote so many great AA jokes. You know what I mean? And um, so, no, that uh, and, and honestly, 
being so I mean, at the beginning, it really helped me because, you know, yeah, insecure if you know, 12 steps, you know, they oh, my God, it's one of the I think everybody in this planet should be in some agreed. I love it. Program. You know, we really all and I kind of miss it, you know, and I really wish I should go back to it. But I come you. back. I'll, I'll send you a link. Yeah. Come back, little Sheba. Yeah. Come yeah, back. Work, work it. Come on back. We miss you. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, it. you know, that helped me through a lot of failures. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. I know what it is. And um, it's so, a book. So after it's the that, playbook you know, of it's yeah. a playbook of life. Yeah. It's a manual. You Nobody gets your playbook. Correct. Nobody, to have, absolutely, nobody knows how yep. you're supposed to behave and, and conduct yourself. And it, it's all there in the text. I love it. You know what, Marla? You're absolutely right. Everybody should find it is the playbook of life. Yeah. You know, uh, the one phrase I love the best, I came from my drinking. I stayed from my thinking. Yeah. And that just says it all because really it applies to, I mean, are there are people probably out there going, nah, fucking bullshit, blah, blah, blah. But of course, that's like that with everything. But, you know, it really and even till this day, I mean, I haven't been I haven't gone to a meeting in a thousand years. I still have those phrases. I still yeah. have those phrases, you know, came from my thing. All of yeah. those things that you don't leave, though, you don't lose those. You don't or, lose. you know, like uh, stop going to a hardware store for milk. <laughs> You're blowing out a light bulb. Yes. <laughs> Why <laughs> buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Doing was the that, same that, thing, <laughs> doing the same thing, and expecting different results. Yeah. Oh my God. All the of those definition things of insanity. <laughs> it's true. It's you know everybody could use this thing. It they, they could Agreed. use. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So, yeah. Because I know I can get I I can ruminate and just hang on to a resentment uh, and then fall uh, into victimhood and. Uh, and oh, why me? And then the compare, uh, oh, compare and despair. That's a good uh, one. Oh God. But but just, you know, if I say the serenity prayer or I do the third step prayer, which I do every morning and even getting down on my knees and I, I have, there's a couple of situations that are going on that- We don't want to hear what you do out. on your knees. We don't want to hear what you do on your knees, but go ahead. <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> He wishes. That was a good conversation. That was a great riff. Great riff. Great yeah. riff. And everybody knows what to do when they go to jail. We've really uh, educated, you know, people what to do. Tell jokes, be funny, you know. Yeah. Tell jokes, be funny. So we can just do a quick wrap up. Uh, comedy <laughs> saves lives. Uh, the power of the punchline to drain the main vein or drain the main pain is critical right. uh, in order to flip the switch. There we go. Now, I just I'm a big believer in in just the power of humor, um, the, the connection, the, uh, the, the calming effect, mostly the connection. And that's what I love about just walking into any situation. Um, I too was in sales. And when you would call up, people would want to take your call, which is really cool. Yeah. But I went through a really dark time. Uh, I had gone through a bad breakup. I had left Los Angeles, moved back to New York, blah, blah, blah. But it was, and I was really white knuckling it with another, another AA term, but I, right. I just, I didn't want to live. I was so depressed and so yeah. broken yeah. that if it wasn't for having a spot at the comic strip, which took me a hundred times to pass, yeah. may, Lucian, may you rest in peace. But that knowing I had to be at the comic strip for an 820, 840, 910 spot, yeah, that, that I, I really, yeah, I credit that with uh, saving my life. And that's why comedy and, yeah. and laughter, I think now is so important because <sighs> shit's happening, girl. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? When you make other people laugh, it really takes you out of yourself. It's true. And the best thing is like, you know, when people come up to you, like when I do the places in Florida, the over 95, they say 55, right. but it's over 95. And I'm not, you know, which is and we're not, not talking speed limit. <laughs> yes. And we're and we're not and it's not rewarding at all. It's not rewarding. It's like it's for the ATM because they're like, what? So yeah. anyway, but when one old woman comes up to me, which happened and goes, thank you so much. I needed that laugh. My husband died a month ago or two months ago. And, and you know what? And that's the shit that brings it all together. You feel like, yeah, you know what? Look what I've done. I, I, I did something for this woman who was in pain. And right. a lot of times. 
comedy helps other people's pain. It's, uh, without it's, a it doubt. Do anything for our pain because we still have the pain. But the few minutes we're on stage, you know, we're taken out of our lives. You know, it's that. And, um, but it, humor it, is a gift. Humor is a gift. Yeah. Like when I started talking about depression yeah. and anxiety and PTSD and, you know, binging, because you know me and my Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> Is it still the Rice Krispie treats? Oh my God. That's oh, be- God. oh really? I, when I had COVID and I was just like, I need comfort food. I'm going to make <laughs> myself some Rice Krispie treats. And I <laughs> bit into it and I was like, I can't taste it. Everyone's oh like, oh, you, yeah, you lose your sense of smell and taste. You're like, oh, That's so you're going to eat healthy. I'm like, no, because it was sense memory. I was like, I know salty and sweet and I could <laughs> feel it, but I couldn't taste it. And I still ate the whole thing. Oh yeah. Funny, funny, yeah. funny. Yeah. That's my thing. But, yeah. um, but when I spoke about, you know, depression and anxiety, when somebody, you know, I remember this one girl came up to me and she said, thank you. I don't feel so alone. And I always said that comedy enabled me to uh, punch the the bully back, which was depression, because right. you know people would say to me, "You're your you're your worst enemy." But right. depression is that like to the tenth power. Yeah. And yeah. depression will tell you you're a piece of shit and you yeah. don't deserve to live. And it's funny how most comedians, you know, they say the comedians have the depression and the darkest life. Dark, you know, and, and it's true. You know, pain is comedy. And that's, you know, when I was a kid, I'm writing my memoirs, ladies and gentlemen. It's called I Never Had Piano Lessons. I'm almost finished with it. Oh, my God. And, that's you know, brilliant. I, I can't wait to, like, publish it before I'm dead, which will be soon. So but here's why one- don't we bookend? Why don't we bookend and say <laughs> how many chapters? Michelle, what chapter are you on today? <laughs> oh, I'm on three. Oh, I well, gotta, I, I, I only have the table done. of contents. I got to get the- it done. My, my memory's so bad. If I don't do it now, it'll be on a post-it note. That's how much I'll remember. But the thing is this. I just want to say this is very important. When I would work on the cruises, there was a couple of people that would sing. And I always go, I want to sing like that. I mean, mm. you've heard some like, oh, my God. Amazing, amazing singers. And what's great is that they just pull other people's songs. It's not like they're writing. Right. They're crap. Right. And um, but I remember these guys. My God, I'd look at them and go, huh. If I had a voice like that, I would not be doing comedy at all. And same people would come up to me and go, oh, my God, I, I, I would love to do. Could you help me do comedy? I would love to be funny. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I want to sing. I don't want to do comedy. I get I pull out a song. I sing it. We're all good. And they all wanted to be comedians. They all love being funny. Yeah. They'll come up to me. Can you write me a couple things? Can you? And I'm like, OK, so it just goes to show with all that talent. They want to do this. They That's want to amazing. Funny, you know, you know l- last night, Mark and I were in D.C. We stopped over and uh, the Mark Twain Awards honoring Dave Chappelle was on. And he really is one of my absolute favorite because yeah. he is beyond brilliant. And yeah, the way brilliant. he he can just really talk about the most painful situations and, uh, you know, racism, uh, uh, what's going on in, in the world, uh, the Dems versus the Republicans, but he illuminates it so brilliantly and he's so edgy. Um, and I was so glad he gave a shout out to Tony Woods, who I absolutely adore. Yeah, and I think, guy, yeah. oh, he's such a good guy. But Dave Chappelle is uh, just unbelievable. And he's really philanthropic. He went to the Duke yeah. Ellington School in D.C. And he's what he said about the power of this art form was so uh, was so spot on. And yeah. It's it's a real gift, and it's also something that yes, people do want to do. And you know, did, have you ever felt though, being a female comedian, you're in a situation? I, I keep on going back to cruises because cruise, right. a lot of cruise audiences aren't real comedy aficion. Afici- I can't even say uh, it. Yeah, aficionados, right? Aficionados, I'm something like that. Pro- yeah, no, that that sounds right. That sounds right. But um, it's you know, I before the word Karen got into our lexicon, there were, you, I yeah, felt what does like- What me? What is this Karen thing? I don't, I'm not up on things. 
Okay, Karen is, okay, all right. Did you ever watch Bewitched? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, remember yes. Mrs. Kravitz, the know-it-all? Yeah, yeah, she would complain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the original Karen. Oh, the know-it-all? In my humble opinion. I'm, it, it, because when that type of personality, when you see all these white women, you know, they get caught on camera or like the white woman, uh, the, the whole thing in Central Park, the guy, he was a black guy. He was a yeah, bird yeah, watcher. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she called the police. A black man is blah, blah, blah. Right, right. That's a Karen. Okay. 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 You know, you'll see yeah. a white woman yelling at a Hispanic woman, learn the language or yeah, just yeah. going up and complaining to a manager. They're, they're really twatty, twatty. But who comes icky. up with that name? Karen. I don't, I don't know. I don't You're know. Karen. No, I'm a Michelle. I don't know what you're right. It's so and crazy. Karen, you know, I think anybody that was born in the late 60s, 60s to like maybe the 70s, uh, maybe it was Karen Carpenter after she died of anorexic. You know, I'm on the top of the world looking down on creation. I think <laughs> Karen didn't become that popular of a girl's yeah. name. No, but no. yeah, not not good. But um, now you have to be you're a Britney. OK, who, by the way. I love Britney Spears and that poor girl. You got to check out the Hulu uh, documentary yeah. on Br Britney's man. Yeah. She has been through the ringer. I and, know, it's uh, terrible. Yeah. Uh, it's terrible. Have you, you saw the, um, you know, what's her name uh, in England that died? Uh, uh, the singer who's uh, her documentary, Amy Winehouse. Okay. You've she seen was that. so yeah. Um, oh, poor please. girl, alcoholic, eating disorder. Just she was surrounded by but, sycophants that would yes. sell her out in a heartbeat. Her own father sold her out. Her own father <sighs> wanted the money and sold her out. And look at all these kids whose fa fathers are, are selling their kids out for the money. I mean, or and mothers, and that's what Britney Spears' father. He hadn't been in the picture, and yeah. meanwhile. She is like raking in 60 mil a year. And yeah. she, I read that she wants to have a kid. She wanted to have another kid. And the father controls her medication, her food, oh everything. And oh if she's not mentally fit and needs a conservator, but she's raking in $60 million a year and she's performing nightly in Vegas and yeah. uh, in a residency, right. I mean- Come on, Judge. Wake the, wake the F up and let this girl live and have yeah, her own life. Yeah, That's yeah. heartbreaking. It's terrible. It's terrible having to sue your own father because they're taken. And you know, how many child stars' parents took all their money? You look back, all those children stars right. have nothing because their parents took it all. Took it all. And uh, it's always you know, the parents. It's always the goddamn yeah, parents. God the goddamn damn. parents. I'll tell you. So <laughs> let me ask you do you have a go to movie? that, you know, when you're kind of bummed out or you just need a yeah. little pick me up, what's your go-to movie? You know what I love? My what? Cousin Vinny. I just love My oh, Cousin Vinny. It's so movie. New York and I'm a New Yorker and it's so my, my did clicking, clicking, my time is clicking. Click. It's just so funny because the, the, because they didn't make the talk in that time. I mean, I love it. I, That's my biological movie. clock ticking. I love it. I love it. Two youths. What's a youth? Two youths. Yes. Two youths. I love Moonstruck. Oh yeah, and that's true. I was I'm I also like slapstick, like you know, adolescent boy humor. I love something about Mary and Dumb and Dumber before Jim Carrey started creeping me out. Um, <laughs> I what he did with his girlfriend, that poor Irish girl. Ugh, that was heartbreaking. Um, he anyway, here nor there. But those those movies, and actually, you know what? I watched Fish Called Wanda because I remember it. it oh, made remember me laugh. him? Kevin Klein, he was so funny. He was really funny. It really didn't make me laugh. No? It didn't make me laugh. No, no, not like it did. But that, that was definitely one of my one of my all time favorites. And Mel Brooks movies, which uh, do you all think of them. All, all of them. do you think that they could make those movies today? Never. Never. No? You mean no, they couldn't make those. Um uh, what was the with the West? What was that one um, with the black blazing Sharon? saddles? Blazing, they could never. They could, and those were so. I love anything that Mel Brooks. Walter Matthau is my ultimate favorite. He's great. I don't he's care great. what he says. I laugh. I loved his movies. Woody Allen movies. I do love. I, I do, do too. When they were I in New them. York, huh? 
I was up for a Woody Allen movie. I read for him. He was like this, looking at my face. I mean, I I had four callbacks for a Woody Allen movie. Oh, wow. And everyone says, oh, you're a young Julie Kavner. You know, you yes, auditioned yes, for yes. him. He's, he's going to remember you. And that's when he decided to go to England and Spain and, you know, <laughs> Barcelona. Yes, you know what, Julie Kavner, you're right. You could have been a young, young oh my God, you're right, yeah. you're right, you're right. Young Julie Kavner. What advice would you give your younger self if your younger self wanted to pursue a career in comedy? What would your advice be? My advice to myself would be, I think, go for it. I'm here. You know what I mean? I, I, it, knowing what I know now, I mean, if I, I knowing that I really, that I left a career because I wasn't happy, I didn't want to end up with a briefcase doing this, that, and the other, and making money. I made money. I spent it. I could care less. I was like, you know, and uh, that I did what I did. I, I mean, I can't even imagine. I left a high paying, lost my apartment, slept on a couch, and, wow. and who'd have thought? And here I am. So, I'm proud of myself that I actually, I, today, if somebody said, why don't you change it? I would, please, I can barely change my, 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 my clothes, my living room. So, um, you know, I, um, just to go out there and do the best. And you, you know what? And being a woman is hard. Just say, you know what? You're going to get, a, it's not going to be a guy goes on stage. They right away go, okay. With a I woman. Make me laugh. Let's see if she's funny. I don't know how many times have we heard this. I don't know funny women. Women aren't that funny. Oh, I mean, oh my God. But meanwhile, look at the show. Roseanne, Rosie O'Donnell, you know, Ellen DeGeneres, all of these women shows. Chelsea, uh, Amy yeah. Schumer. Oh, please. Can I tell you, um, when I was coming up, you know, like I started in, I don't, I think it was like the mid nineties, whatever. Uh, and it was all about being funny and it wasn't about being sexy. And I, I give the, the, the 40 and under like 45 and under crowd, you know, the Amy Schumer's, uh, Rachel Feinstein, uh, a, and a lot of comedians out of in Sarah Silverman, even though she doesn't really sex it up. She's just so funny. Yeah. Um, and good looking and good looking. Yes. Yeah, stunning. Pretty. Absolutely stunning. But Amy right. Schumer and Rachel and uh, Marina Franklin, you know, when you see these, the comics, uh, Nikki Glaser, they're all yeah. stunning and they're really sexy. And I'm, I feel like we kind of paved the way for them because it wasn't about, right. you're right. You know, being sexy. It was about being, you know, being funny and telling the jokes and you would almost have to like take away I'd any kind sexy. of sexuality. Unsex it because, yeah. because if you were sexy, the women hated you because they would, you were yeah. taking the attention of their boyfriend and, and then the Crazy. guys would, you know, look at your tits or whatever. So it's true. You have to and be you like, you can't miss like, these. Even like, with the minimizer, you can't yeah, miss like these. Like Phyllis Diller, when she went for a facelift, it was all over. They didn't want her anymore. It's like, you cannot look good. You have to look like you look. They right. wanted the toady feel. They wanted the unattractive women. They did not right. want looking women back then. And uh, so, yeah, it's changed now. Now you see young girls that are like, Ooh, they're, you know, they don't look like the Philistillas. They don't look, they don't have to do, you know, mom's Mabley things. They don't have to. Toady Field. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is how I work out. This is how I work out. But, yeah. um, Anyway, you know so what? What? It's, you know, it's a different kind of humor, too. And I have to hand it like I remember. Look at me. I'm, I'm fixing my hair and you think I remember when I got the last comic standing and I did a club in, in uh, Philadelphia and I was the headliner. God knows why. And uh, oh, stop with this deprecating. God damn it. If you haven't you learned anything from me, Michelle, <laughs> haven't I taught yeah. you, you know, on something? You know what's so good about me? It's, I'm so old. I don't care anymore. I'll be dead soon. And um, oh. I, so Nikki Glaser was my, was the opening act. And I remember saying to her, of course, now she won't, she probably don't know who I am. I said to her, you are very funny. You are going to be something. Me, I'm going nowhere, but you, you're going to be, <laughs> and she is good. A lot of these young kids are good. Some of them, not my cup of tea, but because I like joke jokes. I'm, I'm an old Borscht Belt kind of uh but she yeah, but was you, she's fun, very smart, and she's yeah. very quick on her feet. Yeah. But 
uh, one thing I, you talk in jokes and, you know, I think that just comes from doing stand up because I, I talk in jokes. I can yes. self edit now. It's, and also I was a news writer. So you have to right, really right, cut right. the extraneous fat off of a sentence and a joke. Right. But, um, I know I'm naturally funny and I know right. I can you walk are. into a situation mm -hmm. and, and make just, it funny. Right. And just turn somebody, you know, listen, uh, I walked into, uh, I was sort of bullshitting with the, um, uh, I went to Warby Parker to go get a pair of glasses and I just started, <laughs> you know, shooting the shit. She wound up giving me two pairs of glasses and we're talking progressives <laughs> and the, the fade, you know, the, they go wow. up and down wow. night and day. Wow. Nothing. Um, I know. You know what? It's amazing. You and I didn't ask for it. I didn't ask for it. She offered. And what I learned in the program is when somebody offers you a gift, you say thank you. So I, I say know. thank you. Well, that's so hard to take for us because we're in the, you know, oh, you don't have to give it to me. I don't, you know, but that's what we learned in the program that it's okay. It's okay to accept a compliment, which we never do. That how you look good. No, I don't. I used to look good. It was telling oh, this. Yes. This, yeah. this I got at the Goodwill. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I have a friend and she Five gave it to me. For this. Five yeah. dollars for this. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But it's I cool. will, I will when somebody compliments me and then, and I know that they're cool, you know, they, oh, I like your blouse. Oh, thank you. It's like 40% off the Bloomingdale's. Yeah. I know they have more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, girl, I, I could sit and talk to you, but we like to keep it, you know, short, sweet, snappy. You know what I'm saying? Here, yeah. I could come back so, for phase two. I'll come back for phase two. And we uh, absolutely. We, we can like gossip this, about like, everybody. Oh, we totally could. But listen, where can people find you? Uh, right now. How I'm can they follow you? <laughs> Uh, well, my website, Michelle Buff, Facebook, please be my Twitter follower. I have no, I don't have enough followers. And that's kept me crazy. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. It's a bunch of shit. I can't keep up with it. And oh, it's now and Clubhouse. Ah, oh, please. I need to bring oh. in money. I can't be sitting here talking into my Logitech uh, webcam and just, you know, hoping somebody tunes in and likes it's it's tough. I also try not to get political, but sometimes I just can't help myself. I know, like, I know. Ugh. The thing is this, anyway, because I'm at this certain age, it's so funny. I never knew this. I'm more on Facebook because that's supposedly for the older people. It is. It is for the younger people. So on Facebook, I write some funny jokes. I put my where I'm going to be. You're great. Michelle, You're great. that's it. That's what that's it. Just Michelle Ballin. Michelle Ballin. I love you. And love thank you, you so much people. for. Being on my show oh, my, and anytime, anytime. I love we'll you. have you back. And I miss you. We got to see each other one of these days when the pandemic is over. Hey, listen, I'll swing by. I'll pick you up in my car now that you're vaccinated. Oh, bitch. Vac one vaccine, only one. But I got the antibodies, but I still operate, you know, on, <laughs> on the whole mask thing. Yeah. But anyway, so thank you so much. Thank you. Baby. I love, love you. you. And mwah. 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 We got to do a couple of All righty, Michelle, that was great. Thank you, baby.